Back in the middle of February this year, 2018, I uploaded a rant video entitled, If you can use Linux, why can't you use Unix? 9,259 people have viewed that video, and over 98% of them have abused me for it, kicked me from pillar to post, bashed me all over the countryside. The reason for that video was I was angry. I was aggro. I was fed up with people demanding and wanting me to run a Linux server OS on my son's servers. This follow-up video clarifies my position, reinforces arguments made in that video, and answers a number of comments made in the comments section below that video. Also, a good mate of the Backyard Tech channel here on YouTube, also a member of the Backyard Tech Facebook group, made a point in his vlog last night regarding operating systems being tightly optimised to the hardware. Now, Sway the Apocalypse said it beautifully, and it's an argument that cannot be argued against. Let's get into the follow-up video. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Well, yes, back in the middle of February this year, 2018, I did upload that RAND video. If you can use Linux, why can't you use Unix? I was fed up with having people wanting me and demanding me and telling me that a Linux server OS would run my network better than a Unix server OS. Now, as I said, 98% of the comments on that video have been pretty harsh. Now I back the arguments I raised in that video. I run a Unix server OS here at home because my son servers are optimized to run Unix as a risk based architecture. Now risk reduced instruction set computing my Motorola 68000 series CPUs, MIPS CPUs, Spark CPUs, IBM Power CPUs are all risk-based. Unix for a long time was designed to run on risk-based architectures. HP UX can be thrown in there as well. At the bare server OS level. A Linux server OS has absolutely no advantage over a Unix server OS. It does not matter whether you are running a first or second LD, a first or second LD PDC or DC, if you are running a server as a network ops server handling DACP, local DNS for the endpoint workstations, local gateway for the endpoint workstations, a Linux distro server OS will have absolutely no advantage over running a Unix distro server OS. They will do exactly the same job. Now, Linux under risk, reduced instruction set computing, RISC. Not every Linux distro out there runs on a risk architecture. My Sun servers are designed primarily to run Unix on risk. Sun for you, Ultra Spark. Why would I want to run Linux for when natively a Unix OS, the likes of Solaris, the likes of OpenBSD, and in some cases FreeBSD, are designed to run on the architecture? Some comments have said, 
Linux is free. I didn't pay for free, free BSD. I didn't pay for open BSD. To a certain extent, you don't pay for Solaris. You can download Solaris. You can get packages for, from Solar from Oracle for free. If you need help with OpenBSD or FreeBSD or NetBSD, you simply put a video up here either on YouTube or contact the forum. I run Unix server OS here because it natively is optimized to run on my Sun servers. My Sun servers are designed primarily to run Unix RISC OSs. Now Sway the Apocalypse, good mate of the Backyard Tech channel, member of the Backyard Tech Facebook group came up with an extremely good point in his vlog last night, Thursday night, Australian time, where he brought up the point of an operating system being optimized for the hardware it's being put on. Now, a classic example of this is MacOS. Even today, going all the way back, MacOS was tightly designed to work seamlessly with the hardware it was being installed on. The same argument can be applied to Solaris. It was designed primarily to work seamlessly on a Sun architecture, whether it was Spark or whether it was x86-64. Now here at home, OpenBSD, well, not at the moment, but OpenBSD, for example, runs my network and runs it beautifully. I have no hassles. Yes, I've had a few problems getting it to work and install. We know that. Once it's running, this network here at home runs like a dream. Now, with me not running an LD or an LD or a child PDC or a sub forest or a TLD or a second level domain, a tier one, tier two, whatever. My Unix server OS runs my network seamlessly. Linux server OS would have no advantage running my network here. None. I mentioned this in the server video regarding GUIs in a server. I run a network ops server. It runs my DACP for my endpoint cert computers, etc. Local DNS availability to those servers. A recursive forward DNS server in Unbound. Gateway control and PF firewall. Now, I'm not running a PDC, I'm not running a TLD, I'm not running a second level, third level, whatever you want to call it. So, trying to say to me that Linux server distros will do a better job running my network is incorrect. Now, I know I fly the flag for Unix. You guys know I love my Ghost BSD. I think it's a wonderful operating system. For my network server, it's Unix because that's what my server architecture is capable of running. The various Linux distro forks out there for Spark don't work on every Spark architecture out there. I don't... Telling me that Linux server distros can do a better job of running my network is incorrect. My network server runs my network. So it does my NFS, it does my Samba, and my, my network addressing. Linux has no advantage in doing that. Now, okay, I get kicked all the time for talking about Unix. You've got to remember, Unix has played a long, big part 
in my IT history. I cut my teeth with Sun servers back in 2000 when I was introduced to the Sun U2 or UE2, whatever you want to call it. From that day on, I fell in love. That was the first time I'd come across a fully fledged, risk based, powerful computer. Now, okay, we admit this risk is not as popular now as it once was. Back in the 2000s and or early 2000s, all the way into the mid 90s, 90s, 80s, risk was the go to large scale business computing system. Reduced instruction set. Reduce the number of instructions to do it and you get the same amount of power out of the proc as if you were using a CISC based system. You could have a slower proc produce the same amount of work as a faster CISC based proc in the KISS scenario. Okay, a lot of people have said to me, I oh, get new servers. I can't, you guys know I don't have that money. Where am I going to find twelve or $15,000? Where am I going to find $25,000 to get a new Sun Xeon server? I'm not going to find that money. The thing is, if you have a specific architecture to run a specific OS, why wouldn't you use that OS? Linux is not compatible with every Sun 4U architecture and some Sun 4V architectures under the Sun. If you've got a Sun 4U based Sun server that is primarily designed to run a Unix RISC operating system, whether it be one of the BSDs or Solaris or one of the Illumos open Solaris distros, why would you run Linux? You wouldn't. You use the operating system specifically designed to run on the architecture of your server. Now, RISC today, such as IBM's Power7, Oracle's T1 and T3 series servers, which are still Spark, some of them run Linux. Oracle systems still run Solaris 11.4 official release is soon. Not every Linux distro runs on every RISC-based server. This is what I can't seem to get through to people. A lot of people have said Linux runs on RISC. No, it does not run on RISC. Not every Linux distro runs on RISC. People have said, yes, I can install Sun on RISC. What RISC? What Spark CPU are you installing it on? If it's Sun 4V, Spark 64, T1, T2, T3, then yes. But if it's Sun 4U, then not every Linux distro is compatible. Secondly, aside from that, with OpenBSD installing natively with no hassles onto my Sun servers, why would I run the Linux system? OBSD 6.1 looks after this network without a problem. Samba shares work beautifully, the NFS shares work beautifully. So there's no advantage to me running Linux. You've also got to take into account as well. If I want to go out and get a sun-badged Oracle server to maintain that sun feel or sun microsystems feel to this network. At the cheapest end, it's going to cost me five or six thousand dollars US, uh, sorry, five or six thousand dollars Australian to get a low-end Xeon or AMD powered sun server. I don't have the money. Unix can run this network without a problem. 
there will be, there is no, and there will be no advantage to me running a Linux network. There is no advantage. Okay, yeah, I, I admit, I do get kicked about for promoting Unix. I admit that. I get kicked for supporting the developers of FreeBSD. I love FreeBSD. Once I get this computer back fixed up, get VM Workstation 12 back on it, etc. As I said, when Windows starts to give me the irrits, I'll go to FreeBSD. Uh, GhostBSD, I'm sorry. I'll use that. Then I might use one of Jimmy Acklaw's. Then I might use Ferran. Then I might use our Man Driver. Look. Right now, if you're just a general computer user, a Unix operating system will do everything you need it to do. People say Linux is free. You don't pay GOATS PSD for anything. I get kicked for supporting OpenBSD at the server end because it's Unix. I don't think that's fair, frankly. At the general computing level for the average user, the four common systems out there Windows, Mac OS, Linux distros, and Unix distros will suffice for the general user. For specific users, okay, I grant you the argument that in some cases, Linux might suit you. For other uses, Unix might suit you, or Mac OS. But at the server side of things, a Unix server OS can do everything a Linux server OS can do and vice versa. There is no problem. DACPD, local DNS, gateway, firewall. So me running OpenBSD should not be looked upon as a degraded network operating system that can't do anything. Where in actual fact, OpenBSD 6.1 can do everything Debian on an x86-64 can do. Now, Linux being free. Some Linux is free. Not all Linux. Red Hat's not free. You can download it, but you're going to have to pay for it in the long term. If you want the free version of Red Hat, you get Fedora. Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, whatever. Not all Linux is free. In the same vein that not all Unix is free. Solaris is limited free. Yes, you can download Solaris for free. Yes, the package manager is free. But as soon as you need some serious support with Solaris, you have to pay for it. I don't... I don't see a problem with me running OpenBSD to look after this network here I have at home. In fact, it should not be looked at as a... primitive network server operating system. Okay, BSD hasn't changed in a long time. We all know that. But for it to run, for, for my network here, when I have a server that is designed primarily to run a RISC Unix operating system natively, OpenBSD and Solaris run natively on my Sun servers, then I am not going to run Linux because a Linux distro is not going to offer me anything more than what I'm already getting out of OpenBSD. The Debian Spark port does not work on my Sun servers. Silo panics. 
Now, it was suggested that I could redo silo and get it going that way. Too much of a hassle. OpenBSD installed natively without any problem at, at 6.1. Yes, we had a few hiccups with 6.2, but once we got it running at 6.2, it ran beautifully. So, is there an advantage in any way, shape or form for a network server OS that's not running some sort of first or second LD, let alone relay or secondary DNS or secondary gateway or whatever, is there any advantage? My opinion, no. Don't try and tell me that Linux at the server end would do a better job of running my network the Unix will. Don't try and tell me that running a Linux server OS is better for me than running a Unix server OS. Don't jam Linux server distros down my throat by telling me they, that Linux server distros run across every processor architecture under the sun. No, they don't. Also, again, I clarify the point that's been made multiple times on that RAND video. My son servers delivered to their first customer, I am the second customer of these two Sun systems, was delivered in 2008. That is not 20 years old. Anyone out there who claims my Sun systems are 20 plus years old you are very much extremely incorrect. Do not try and tell me that a Linux server distro will run my network better than a Unix server distro. I do not want to hear that again. Even if I went out and bought the x86-64 equivalent of my Sun server, my beloved E4900. I may and probably would run a Unix network because that's what I know. So the the point of I'll run Linux because it's a much far superior server operating system and it'll run your network better is a null and void point. Because <clears throat> even if I was running some sort of domain based PDC here at home, Unix server OSs can do the job. Even if it was Solaris or it's FreeBSD, or it's OpenBSD, I will migrate to a Unix server distro to run a network for me personally before I go to a Linux distro. Because a Unix distro suits my network. It is horses for courses, as far as I'm concerned. Now, like I said, a lot of people have ripped through me on that video. I've copped a lot of abuse. Um, I have been kicked from pillar to post. But I was sick and tired of having people trying to tell me that Linux is a better server OS and will run my network better. In actual fact, at the level I'm running my network, which is a work group based system, for want of a better term, Linux wouldn't do the job any better than Unix. And that's every Linux distro versus every Unix distro. If and when I'm able to get some money, enough to afford a brand new Sun server, or at least a second-hand Sun server, maybe a Sun 4V or a Spark 64 system, I will still run Unix and possibly Solaris, because it is designed and optimised to run on a risk-based 
Spark Architecture. Now, I will put a link in the description below this video to CISC, RISC, Spark, so that people get an idea of why I can't run Linux on Sun for you. Remembering my CPU's code name is Panther. I haven't got Cheetah, I haven't got Jaguar, I've got Panther, which is 1.5 Ultra Spark 4 Plus to 1.95 Ultra Spark 4 Plus CPUs here at home. So please, okay, stop telling me to run a Linux server OS because it's not going to run on my Sun servers. I am not going to run Linux on a server designed to run a Unix operating system. Anyway, stick around. We'll have the IT acquisitions video coming up for you shortly as well. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.